So home prices are still heading upwards in Orange County. Interest rates are still high. Something's gotta give in the housing market, right? Is it gonna happen during the month of May? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about on today's episode. So on today's episode, we're gonna be going over my monthly housing market forecast for Orange County. We're also gonna be covering some of the updates around the Real Estate Commission lawsuit, which is going to dramatically impact how both buyers and sellers purchase property come July. And then I'll also be going over my advice for both buyers and sellers who are thinking of entering the market over the next couple months. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so before we get into my expectations for the month of May in Orange County, first I want to go over what happened in April, at least briefly. Now I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of data. However, I know that most of you are interested in two things. Number one, what are home prices doing? Are they going up or down? And then number two, how fast are homes going on and off the market inside Orange County? So let's go ahead and take a look at both of those. So let's start with home prices. So taking a look at a snapshot of the Orange County housing market. So over the last week, about 450 homes sold. 66% of those homes sold for either at or above asking price. And in terms to list to sale price ratio, which is basically how much it was listed for versus how much it sold for, that number is over 100%. So again, home prices are continuing to grow inside Orange County and they really have been for the entire year. Now in terms of how fast homes are going into escrow, right now if you look at the entire month of April, 62% of all homes sold went into escrow in less than two two weeks and 81% of all homes sold went into escrow in less than a month. Now these numbers have remained relatively similar to the last couple months and it's basically just telling us we are still in a hot seller's market in most of Orange County. Homes are going off the market very quickly. In fact, right now the average days on market is about 40 days. However, realistically, especially in the price points at 1.5 million or below, if you price your home correctly, put it on the market, odds are you're getting multiple offers the first week weekend and going into escrow in less than 10 days right now. It's an extremely hot market, especially under that $1.5 million. As you creep up past 2 million, it slows down slightly, but it's still much faster than usual, even in the luxury price points right now as well. And if you're interested in the specific price point of either the homes you're looking at purchasing or the home that you're thinking about selling, you can check out this graph right up here. And this gives you a price breakdown, again, how fast homes are going into escrow based on the different price ranges. And again, you can see that anything under 1.5 million is basically going into escrow on an average of a month or less right now. So why are we seeing this hot seller's market continue to persist month after month? It has everything to do with inventory. That's been the case for the last couple of years. And and that really hasn't changed. Inventory is just so much lower than it usually is, especially when you look at pre-COVID. It's just very hard, even when demand drops to a low level, to really get inventory to grow enough to start seeing us get into a balanced or even a buyer's market. Right now, inventory is so low, it's hard to see us coming out of a seller's market anytime soon. Now, why is inventory remaining low? Interest rates. So anybody that purchased a house or refinanced a house during COVID knows they got a great interest rate, usually in the two, three, maybe 4% range. In fact, if you look at all of California, any homeowner that has a loan right now, 87% of them have interest rates at 5% or below. So when interest rates right now are hovering in the low sevens and have been there for the entire month of April, you can see that if someone has an interest rate at two or 3%, they are not going to want to give that up. They want to stay put. They really don't want to lose that interest rate unless they absolutely have to move or have a good reason to move and want to be able to capitalize on this seller's market right now, most homeowners are staying put. And because of that, you're just not seeing inventory hit the market like it usually does during this time of year. And that really isn't going to start changing until we see interest rates come down significantly. I'm talking anywhere from the six to six and a half percent range before you start to see at least a little bit more sellers coming back on the market. And then if it got below 6%, then I could see some inventory finally starting to free up. But again, that's not predicted to happen anytime in the foreseeable future. Even though rates are still predicted by the end of the year to go down a little bit, we're not talking about a two or three percentage drop. We're talking about getting from maybe seven and a half percent down to six and a half percent. So knowing that general information about interest rates as well as the inventory, what should we expect to see over the month of May and heading to the summertime? Let's go 
ahead and take a look. So what does this mean for the month of May as we head closer into summertime? Well, typically during this time of year, and it was very similar last year, we're most likely going to see demand start to peak towards the end of this month, early June, as people start getting out of school, they go on vacations, and they put home buying on the back burner as they're going out at the beach, barbecues, hanging out with family and friends. So demand will typically peak around this time of year and continue to go down for the rest of the year. The only thing that is going to change that is that if we have a sudden interest rate drop at some point before the end of the year, then you can expect demand to pick back up again, especially if we get interest rates in those low sixes and then you might see a secondary spike of demand happen at some point when that happens later this year. Now on the inventory side of things during the month of May you can expect inventory to continue growing slowly as we head through the month. It has been growing more significantly over the last couple weeks however because again we have such a low bar of inventory to start with it really hasn't impacted the housing market that much. We're still seeing homes fly off the shelf especially in that 1.5 million or below range right now. However as May goes on, if we continue to see inventory slowly build, you might see a slight noticeable change in the housing market where we're not quite in such a hot seller's market as we are right now. However, even with inventory on the rise, don't expect to see a balanced or a buyer's market anytime soon. Demand is still going to be higher than supply for the entire month of May. And if interest rates do start dropping towards the end of the month, you can expect that imbalance to start happening again, where it becomes an even hotter seller's market as we go into to June. However, right now the expectations are interest rates are probably going to remain above 7% where they have been for the entire month of April for the month of May as well. And maybe towards the end of the year, we'll start seeing those go down a little bit more significantly. So before I get into my advice for both buyers and sellers for the month of May, I did want to give you a quick update on the real estate commission lawsuit that's been going on for the last couple months that you've probably heard a lot about. So number one, if you don't know about it and you want to get informed about exactly what that lawsuit is and how that's going to impact the industry, which is going to be huge coming this July. If you're watching this on YouTube, check out the link right up here where I go over everything you need to know about that commission lawsuit. So a few updates that I want to give you. Number one, it's one step further in the process. So over the last month, the judge has fully approved this. So really the last step now is the final court approval. So we're continuing to move through this process. It's widely expected that these new rules will be implemented sometime in July. And so as of right now, not much has changed, but those changes are coming and they will be here in about two months. The second thing I want to bring up has to do with Zillow. So just a little bit of background before I talk about the story is one of the things that came out of this lawsuit is the way that agents and buyers communicate with each other as well as the contract works. So before you're able to quickly call an agent, ask them to show you a home, they can arrange the showing and you can get into that home pretty quickly without any issues, without any paperwork signed. However, because of this lawsuit, one of the things they did roll out is that before any agent is able to show a buyer anything, they have to sign a contract that goes over what the agency relationship is with the buyer. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that the buyer has to sign something with the real estate agent saying that they're going to pay their commission no matter what, but it does mean they do have to sign some type of agreement before they go to see homes. So what Zillow just came out with, and I expect to see this from every other company as well, is what's called a non-exclusive agreement. So basically what they're saying is that you can sign this piece of paper, we're gonna be able to show you as many homes as you want for seven days, and we're not asking you to commit to anything up front in terms of what you're going to pay your real estate agent. So this is a good thing for the consumer because it's now going to let you call that real estate agent and just basically sign a contract saying that you're just showing me homes and nothing else. I'm not agreeing to pay you anything. However, it's going to allow you to get into properties and start looking at properties a lot faster and then be able to determine if that agent is someone that you wanna work with and establish that relationship where you're eventually going to pay them to help you purchase a home. Now again, Zillow was the first one to put this out. However, the California Association of Realtors has already said they're going to be releasing all of their new forms sometime this month and I'm assuming you're going to see something very similar with those forms as well for all other agents operating inside California that allows you to view property without having to fully commit to paying an agent. That way you can figure out if you two are going to work well together, if they're going to provide you enough value for you to commit to that relationship where you're saying that if I can't get the seller to pay for your commission, that the buyer is going to pay out of pocket to have that service provided. So again, I think this is a good thing for the 
consumer because it allows you to see homes and you're not committing to anything up front. And then as usual, as new forms come out, as new rules come out around this commission lawsuit, make sure you hit that subscribe button because I'll be updating you with any new information that does come out. So that way, if you are thinking of purchasing or selling your property after July, you'll have a very good understanding of exactly what to expect from both your buyer and seller agents. Okay, so now let's wrap this up with my advice for both buyers and sellers if you're thinking of getting into the market anytime soon. So let's start with buyers. So to be honest, there's going to be a lot of potential home buyers right now that it just doesn't make financial sense for you to purchase a home. Interest rates are high, home prices are high, and if you look at your finances and you're really trying to stretch to make it work, it might just not be the right time for you to purchase home. Yes, there are programs out there to help you with your down payment. Yes, there's ways out there to be able to get the seller to help you buy down your interest rate. So those options are available. And if you wanna hear about those options or explore those in more detail, feel free to check out the link below. You can schedule a 15 minute phone call with me and I can kind of give you a better understanding of how those things work. But even with that type of help, again, it might just not make sense for you to purchase a home right now. However, if you're part of the lucky few buyers that are able to purchase a home right now and financially it does make sense, there are definitely opportunities out there even in this hot seller's market. So let's go over a couple ways that you might be able to find a great deal even in today's market. So the first way is that if your interest and the buyer's interest line up better than any other offer out there. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's say you go to try to purchase a home. You don't have a set timeline where you need to be in a home, so you're flexible on your close date. However, the other three offers out there are trying to sell their home, purchase a new home at the same time, so they're on a very strict timeline. Now, if the home you're trying to purchase also needs to have a little bit of time to find a property of their own or doesn't want to close right away, you're going to be able to have that flexibility to meet what that seller is asking for and have a better shot of getting into escrow even if you might not have the highest price offer. So these type of opportunities are going to be a case-by-case -case basis and the best way to identify them is find a home you like, have your agent reach out to the selling agent and figure out exactly what the seller is looking for so you can see if there's any way that you're going to be able to align your interests and the seller's interest in a way to make the offer good for both parties. The second Second way of finding a good opportunity in today's market is have your real estate agent set you up for homes that have been on the market for at least 30 days. So these homes are typically overpriced in today's market, which means they're not getting a lot of activity because usually the first two weeks is where the majority of home buyers are going to be able to see those homes. They're on Zillow, they're on Redfin on the front page, but after that they kind of start fading into the background and so they're not getting as much interest as they were before. So these overpriced homes are going to be an option where you're able to get in there and maybe you only have to compete with one other offer or maybe no other offers because again the interest is way lower and you might be able to walk away with a deal especially if you're able to find a seller that needs to sell quickly their home's been on the market for a while and maybe they're an escrow on another property and they're about to lose that property unless they can get an escrow with you these are the type of ways you're able to find deals in today's market and then lastly a third way you can find opportunities and i don't want to give you false hope these are pretty rare but you can have your agent set up a search for you to look for assumable loans. Now, if you don't know what an assumable loan is, you can check out this video right up here if you're watching this on YouTube where I explain the entire thing, but basically it allows you as a buyer to take over the loan of the seller, and if that seller has a super low interest rate, you're gonna be able to get that super low interest rate, saving you thousands and thousands of dollars in interest and making the home more affordable. So if you're able to find one of those assumable loans and you have the timeline required to do that, which typically is gonna be a few months, you might be able to find a great deal on a home and get a great interest rate that you're gonna be able to get in the two or 3% range as well. So again, if you're not familiar with assumable loans, make sure you check out that video because it could be an option out there if the right circumstances pop up. And then finally, if you are looking for a home right now and you wanna be able to make sure that you're writing the most compelling offer possible to give yourself the best shot of getting into escrow, even if you don't have the highest asking price, make sure you check out this video up here where I go over the top five things that you need to do in 2024 to make sure you're writing a very competitive offer that has nothing to do with the price.
And then as always, if you have any questions about the buying process, what steps you need to be taking to get to a point where you could purchase a home, feel free to set up a 15 to 30 minute discovery call with me anytime. Click that link below, check out my calendar, find a date and time that works for you, and I'd love to discuss it in more detail. Okay, so now on the selling side of things, so sellers, unless we start seeing interest rate in those low sixes or below again anytime soon, we've most likely either seen the peak or will see the peak very soon in terms of demand for the year. So typically, as we head into summer, you start seeing demand go down because like I said before, families are going on vacation, they're going on barbecues, going to the beach, and they're putting home buying on the back burner. So it's very typical to see demand max out at the end of the spring and then continue downwards for the remainder of the year. Again, the only thing that will change that is if we see a significant drop in interest rates sometime before the end of the year, then we might get a secondary bump at some point, but it's hard to say because right now, interest rates seem pretty stable in the mid seven and they've been that way all of last month and they don't seem to be heading down anytime soon. So what this means for you as a seller is that every week during May, you can expect to see more and more inventory build up on the market. Now, are we gonna be in a balanced or a buyer's market anytime soon? No, we're still going to be in a seller's market because of the way supply and demand numbers look right now. However, you're going to have more competition. You might have a few less buyers going through your open houses, maybe one or two less offers. So it will be a little bit more important to make sure that you're marketing your home correctly and really taking advantage of those first two weeks on the market. If you overprice your home and you have to end up reducing your price later on, that's the way that you're really gonna hurt yourself in today's market. You wanna make sure you price it correctly, out of the gate, do a good job marketing it on all the different platforms out there so you're getting as many people through your open house as possible so you can get those multiple offers, having the buyer bid up your home and getting the best price for your home. It's been shown time and time again that those first two weeks are when you're usually going to find the best offer for your house so you wanna make sure you're taking advantage of it. And then the second thing that you wanna know as a homeowner is I've been talking to a lot of people that are thinking of selling your home and one of the questions I keep getting is should I sell now or should I wait for the new commission rules to take effect in July because I think I might be able to pay a little bit less commission and therefore hopefully get a little bit more money for my house. Now because I've been hearing this so often, there is going to be a good chance that come July, you're going to see a larger than normal amount of inventory start hitting the market, making it again more competition for you and a little bit harder for you to get the best price for your home. So if you are thinking of trying to sell your home and you're trying to figure out over the next three months when is going to be the best time to do so, well, the time is now for sellers. The sooner you list it, the less competition you have because the longer you wait, the more inventory is going to build up this month and as we go through summer, unless we see interest rates drop, but at this point, it doesn't look like we're gonna see a significant drop anytime in the next couple months. But again, it's very hard to predict right now. And if you are thinking of selling your home over the next couple months, but you're not sure what steps you should be taking or how you should be getting your house ready for market, again, feel free to look at that link below, schedule a discovery call with me anytime. I'd be happy to walk you through the process and give you a much better understanding of exactly what you should be doing to get your house ready for market so you're getting the best price possible. And then sellers, if you do want more information about what you can be doing to get the best price possible for your house, feel free to check out this video right up here where I go over over exactly what you should be doing to maximize the amount of money you're getting when you do put your house on the market. So that's all I have for you today for the month of May. Again, if you wanna stay updated on everything going on with the commission lawsuit, as well as everything else happening in the housing market, make sure you hit that subscribe and like button because as soon as I have the information, I'm gonna be putting it out here for you so you know exactly what's going on as we head towards the summertime. So until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you on the next show. Bye everybody.